I'm 18 years old and a senior in high school. It's close to graduation and the biggest thing on my mind is if I have gotten accepted into a university and which one will I choose to attend. The military could not be further from my thoughts. In my family of four girls, it was sort of a tradition that we go off to college after high school. I never thought about doing otherwise. Although Army recruiters would come speak to the seniors, I used that time as an excuse to get out of class. I couldn't even tell you what they talked about. It's June and I have graduated high school and chose the school I would attend. The University of Indianapolis is a very expensive private school. I hadn't earned any scholarships or grants, so most of my school funding would come from loans. This concerned my parents that I picked such an expensive college and they persuaded me to go to IU Northwest, which was a really good school and a lot less expensive. During my first semester at IU, I realized that I lacked the drive and discipline to focus on my classes. The new sense of freedom had hit me hard. I decided to withdraw from my classes and promised my parents that I would go back the following fall semester. Again, my parents were concerned. It was the summer of 2001 and I was 19. I was still enjoying being a grown-up. I hadn't registered for classes. I decided to move off to Indianapolis with my boyfriend of a year. I had told my parents that I planned on going there to take classes and work part-time. We had it all planned out. While in Indianapolis, I got my first big reality check. I realized that not only did I lack the discipline to go to school, but I wasn't ready to live on my own. This scared me. I began to think about what I was going to do with my life. The adventure lasted almost a year, and back home I went. March 2002. My parents developed a scheme to get me to join the military. I began hearing about the benefits of joining from everyone. My family members, friends, even the pastor of our church were bringing up the military. I didn't understand why until my dad tricked me. One day my dad asked if he could drive my car I had purchased before leaving to Indianapolis. While on a drive, my father stopped at the recruiter's office. It was then when it hit me that my parents wanted me to join. When looking at the brochures for all the branches, the Air Force stood out to me. After talking to a recruiter and finding out about all the money I could get for school, I never looked back. Two months later, I was taking my first plane ride to San Antonio, Texas for basic training. Basic training was unlike any experience that I ever had. It was the first time I had been away from everyone I loved. Getting through basic training gave me a sense of accomplishment, and the next thing I knew, I was graduating from technical school as a security forces troop. My first and only base was Hanscom Air Force Base in Massachusetts. After seeing this base for the first time, I had finally understood why all of my training instructors kept telling me how lucky I was. Hanscom was definitely not your typical military installation. It looked more like a beautiful gated community. Being a security forces troop, Hanscom was about as good as it got. Hanscom being such a small base meant there was a lot of downtime at work. This also meant something else, that we deployed often. It wasn't until I deployed that I realized why the security forces career field was critically manned. My first deployment came about nine months after I had gotten to my base. I was young, single, and eager to make some extra cash. So talk of possible deployment was exciting news. When the list came out and I found out I was not on it, I quickly found someone who was not as eager as I was to go, and I begged to take their place. Although it was pretty scary being just 60 miles from Baghdad, I found the time went pretty fast. I spent 90 days overseas and the next thing I knew, I was on my way home. It's September of 2004 and talk of another deployment is in the air. I had been expecting to go again, so I really wasn't surprised that I was tasked. The deployment this time was to United Arab Emirates. The destination intrigued me because until that point, I had never heard of this place. After a briefing, I was extremely excited. I had gotten lucky. I was on one of the few deployments to a place that was beautiful, peaceful, and had a built-up base. There was one thing about this deployment that had me a little reluctant to leave. In the spring of that year, I had gotten married to my longtime boyfriend, Cleveland. We were just about to begin our lives together, and here I am getting whisked away for six months. 
Neither of us took my deploying very well. Although I had made some good friends, I couldn't get home fast enough. After my second deployment, my husband and I realized that we would soon have some important decisions to make. Although I did not want to make security forces a career, I loved the Air Force. I just wasn't sure if I wanted to re-enlist or move on. It's September of 2005, and I was tasked yet again to deploy. The saying, save the best for last, definitely rang true in this situation. IUD Air Base in Qatar was the nicest base that I had been to. There was a movie theater, beauty shop, pizza hut, and what we called a desert version of Starbucks. Even my job wasn't so bad. I worked the search pits, which was probably the best place to work if you were a security forces troop. All in all, I got pretty lucky yet again to get tasked for such a nice place. During my 180 day deployment, I still wasn't sure if I wanted to stay in the military or get out. I had had so many good experiences so far. My deploying is nearing an end, and I hear that back home a team is already gearing up to get deployed to Iraq. I felt so lucky that I wasn't on that deployment. But I also began to think, how long would my so-called luck last? I began to think about my parents, my husband, and the children that I would one day have. Then I made a decision. I had had so much respect for those who went to Iraq and Afghanistan, especially those who volunteered, but I had to be true to myself. And the truth was that I didn't want to go to either one of those places. I decided to count my blessings and to get out of the military. It's the summer of 2006, and I was officially off active duty. I quickly began taking college courses. The first year was exciting. In fact, I hadn't felt that excited since the day I boarded the plane to go to basic training. There was only one difference. The fear I had on that day was gone. It was replaced with hope. The two years had passed by quickly. I was able to utilize my GI Bill and began taking college classes. I had finished school to become a medical assistant and was ready to join the workforce. To our surprise, I was expecting my first child, Kaylin. Kaylin was born January 2009. Although my love for the Air Force remains, the birth of my daughter validated my reasoning for getting out of the military. Today, with the son on the way, I can't imagine being away from either of them for too long. I know I made the right decision, but I will be forever grateful for my experiences and friends I made while serving my country.